Hello people, gaming in India is skyrocketing and given the success of the gaming community or the game development industry uh, overall in India, it looks like a lot of a younger crowd, youth or kids want to start their career as a professional gamer in the industry. Now, to get there, we need to understand the basics, the ecosystem around it, uh, how the teams work, what is the, what is the business model of the teams, the platforms that can support you to amplify your growth in the in the in the gaming industry in your journey in today's episode we are going to talk about one such amazing platform that can help you grow and create a kickstart career let's talk about clan so i want to begin this conversation with a with a simple elevator pitch from your, uh, you know, from you about your platform, Clan, right? What is it? All right. So, I mean, to put it simply, uh, I I focus on the consumer elevator pitch here, knowing the sort of audience that uh, we'll be talking to. But uh, it's basically a social networking platform for anyone and everyone who wants to be a part of uh, the gaming and esports industry. Uh, having said that, the ideology that clan was built around was empowering the grassroots, figuring out the first few steps for esports and gaming aspirants. It was how the industry is stacked right now, talking specifically about India, which is our launch market. Um, it's a little top heavy still. The aspirations are set up there with the leading creators, uh, organizations, and uh, professional athletes. But the largest chunk still lie at the bottom who have their aspirations at that level and even potential but they find it hard to navigate through the industry and seek opportunities. So that's exactly where Glenn steps in. We want to uphold discoverability and organically drive value and opportunities for the industry. Awesome. Uh, sounds very interesting because, you know, uh, I've been doing uh, content on YouTube for two, three years now. Uh, I do majorly on the game development side, but there's always a lot of, uh, you know, queries, questions coming from the, from the gamer community, from the esports community, right? Like I know, I, I have um, met people, uh, kids who ask me, how, what should I do to get into the esports or, you know, into that industry? Because that's like an unspoken, undiscovered kind of a path. Nobody actually knows it. Everybody wants to do it. Um, right. So can you just touch base on, on how this thing works? Because um, I... Even at my end, being a professional, being more into gaming and working on games, I should be responsible to talk to, you know, my audience as well. Uh, okay, boss, mm -hmm. this is the way. This is what you do. In terms of game yeah. development, it's easier for me to make them understand. But I would want you to explain people how to get into the, the gaming side of it. Got it. I mean, see, uh, we're going to be very honest, even if we don't specifically talk about gaming or esports, the way people can be a part of an industry or navigate through an industry is by building a network. Yeah. And that's what Clan, in its simplest form, is out there to do. Now, the way we do it is something that is very unique and very esports or very gaming centric. Because uh, when you hop onto the platform and you start building your profile, Every question that probably a person who wants to work with you or wants to start playing with you, create an esports squad with you, um, get you on board as a designer, a caster, uh, would ask. Now, the profile building in Clan is so in-depth and so flawlessly made. I mean, as flawless as possibly we could make it. Uh, where you hop onto the platform, you start onboarding the games you play that becomes your identity on the platform, then you categorize your profile as well. You don't need to absolutely be a gamer or a content creator to be on plan. Because okay. how we're witnessing the industry mature right now is, it's an industry, right? It's not just like you said, the first breed of esports teams and creators, esports happened to them. Correct. Not that they intentionally made it happen. They made it big. Now we know the truest potential, but there's no path to walk. So yeah. that is precisely what we're trying to fulfill. You onboard your games. We even allow you to sync your in-game statistics, your language preferences, where are you from, categorization of a profile, say if you're a pure play analyst or you're a caster who's wanting to take it up professionally or you're a designer who wants to help out multiple squads or individuals 
for that matter, be it thumbnail designing, just packaging the entire content piece. All of these guys have a place on Clan and they can loudly shout out what their skills and interests are, which no other platform out there today allows them to. I mean, LinkedIn is probably what comes to mind when people speak about discovering opportunities, but we know our audience. They're fairly young. Yeah. Uh, they're predominantly from uh, tier two, tier three cities. So, I mean, communication lapses are very real. They're not articulating enough to even put across. I mean, we've spoken to the largest organizations in the country today and I've got feedback like they get hundreds of emails every day, with just two words or three words on it. Like I play PUBG or I play BGMI, please take me in your squad. We're just empowering these people like a tiny feature that we figured out. There's an about section on your client profile. When you scroll down at the bottom of it, you can simply download a digital CV right off the platform. Not it will capture all your socials, your language preferences, what games you play, playing game statistics as well. So the future, how we see it and uh, envision it is in the future, if any gamer or creator or anyone who's looking to fit into the esports and gaming industry can just simply send a profile link, their client profile link to anyone they're talking to. If it's a professionally structured conversation, they can always download a CV and send it. Got it. Got it. So, to, so to, you know, you have put it out in a, in very simple words. This is like um, uh, not really comparing the platforms, but both the platforms have their own uh, you know strengths. But it's like LinkedIn, where you where you can grow as a ga- as a professional gamer uh, and get opportunities and you know network around with people. Correct. No, that's I mean you're not wrong at all. If we need to break it down in very layman terms in conversation. Uh, it's like LinkedIn and Instagram came together and had a hybrid table, uh, <laughs> but just for the gamers, uh, that's what client is. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, but you know what the, the younger, gen- like I also, re- um, have read a lot about, um, you know, um, courses or, uh, things which are readily available, uh, for anybody to just learn mm-hmm. and understand link what LinkedIn is and what, mm-hmm. what you do on it and how can it, uh, help you grow. Right. Uh, now your platform, now you spoke about a lot of things that your platform can offer, right. Mm-hmm. But the crowd that I see, uh, and I, and I usually talk to, uh, they are one level, you know, below, uh, even understanding what it can, um, uh, how it can be beneficial or helpful for anyone. Are you guys also looking at that layer where first you educate people uh, as in uh, a platform like this could help you? Like what are things that you can do on that platform is a secondary thing. But are you guys also doing something like that? Um, Not on the platform, but outside the platform or any such things? So precisely, we were precisely doing that, greatly pointed out. Uh, so we went live with our closed room uh, beta in the month of December. Okay. We had built an early wait list of around uh, 10,000 people, 10,000 gamers to be specific. And Clan has invested most of its time just understanding the users, their psychology, their pain points, and how can we help them. When I say this, we've literally all the founders, the four, four, four co-founders, uh, the support team around it. I've personally at least had conversations with around 2,000 gamers over the last three months where we call them on a Zoom call. Uh, once they're onboarded, we try and tell them what the platform's larger vision is, what we're out here to do. And how can doing small things within the profile will help them a, a lot to just be discovered. Because as a platform, Once the tech kicks in, once we start scaling, there'll be a lot of machine learning and artificial intelligence involved as well. All the data points that are given, like we're building a matchmaking tool, for example. Gone are the days where gamers will have to hop onto a Discord or a Facebook and put out a laundry list saying, I need a gamer who speaks Marathi or Gujarati, uh, listing down their kill death ratios and other statistics, and also going down to the details of asking, do you play on Wi Fi or you play on mobile data? That's the depth that means these guys go for connecting. Right. All of it is just covered in a profile. So on, on a platform like Clan, you don't have to look for gamers. The platform will exactly point you in the right direction yeah. to what people should you be talking. We'll benchmark every profile with a percentage. So if Weber is on the platform, 
lands up on Sagar's profile, he'll see a match percentage over there. If we both play the same game, if we speak the same language, if we have complementary in-game roles as well, I mean, mm. that's the depth. If you're a sniper and I'm an assault, our match percentage will be higher. Got so, it. just the ease, the data that we've taken is not something that will be consumed by every user. It won't be that... Um, I mean, that scarier process or you don't need to study a lot. It's just the data that the gamers give us and we package it in a way where it becomes easier for people to find exactly what they need. Got it. Got it. Understood. Uh, but this is, I think this is part one of the of the platform, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, it's a two-way process, right? People who are looking for opportunities and people who are who are looking giving for out that giving out the opportunities, right? So uh, even I am uh, not really, you know, I don't have enough knowledge about the other side of mm-hmm. the business. So can you just take me through, uh, you know, who are these people exactly? What are these companies? Mm-hmm. Who are these people who actually need this side of the set of people? Now, while being a B2C platform, um, it's very different when it comes to esports or gaming because uh, a customer for us is not just one individual. Now, to answer your question, there are more than enough tournament organizations out there, yeah. and more than enough talent management agencies out there. India has built two of the largest, if not three, uh, streaming platforms as well. We all yeah. know the likes of Loco and Google. These guys are also on the constant hunt for talent. Got it. Even the larger organizations that we talk to um, now, we're seeing the space mature in a very good manner. We're seeing a few of the organizations even rolling out their academy sports, yeah. trying to purposely build an underdog sport so that they can, again, uh, I mean, deeply root themselves in the community. And all of this drives a lot of value, right? Your fans are eventually turning out to be a part of your system and who wouldn't want that? So all of these businesses that are involved in esports also have a place on plan. And I mean, we're very, very vocal about the fact that we're not a disruptive platform in any way or form. Uh, we're an enabler. You talk mm-hmm. about the ecosystem that we're trying to build. It's It starts with gamers, matures into squads. At, at a point, we'll start onboarding organizations as well and tournament organizers as well, which is the largest form of engagement. I mean, once, what do you do once you build a squad? You obviously look out for tournaments. So even for those guys to promote their IPs and properties, it becomes a very, very data-driven process. I mean, if I could quote an example, if Weber is looking at doing, say, a Valorant tournament uh, in the coming few days, uh, our audience is largely, the gamers are largely on Instagram and Discord, uh, not so much on Facebook. There's a minority there, but uh, they look for all these opportunities uh, actively on an Instagram and a Discord. Discord is I love the platform, but it still is a closed group sort of yeah. a situation. You need to be in a specific server, a specific channel to get a specific message. Plus it's hyperactive. Uh, the tendency of missing out on a few messages is also very real. While on Instagram, it's for everything, right? I mean, the clutter making in itself is such a task where say, for example, uh, you've, as a tournament organizer, you've built an audience size of even 10,000 people put out the next property that you're out to do, uh, Instagram will limit it organically to reach out to a certain number of people, even from within your own following that you've picked. Yeah. After a point, if you want to get into your audiences, uh, you have to invest some monies in it and that's how you get it. But True. now speaking on the flip side, how the tech operates, Instagram, I mean, you use keywords of games or eventually, in a sense, target a gamer. Now, Instagram doesn't know if a gamer is a subway surfer gamer or a Valorant gamer, if he's playing on mobile, if she's playing on a PC. Yeah. All of these things are not clear, but and these ads eventually reach these people. Now, if Weber brings the same proposition to us at Clan, our backend and our data is so strong and we know our users so well that with like three clicks, literally three clicks at the backend, and I can tell you we have like 50,000 Valorant gamers, Whatever you have to offer, we'll ensure that uh, our algorithm ensures that it reaches out to uh, the right people. So clutter breaking, again, eliminating a lot of noise, showing people the content, showing people uh, 
tournaments, showing people job opportunities, which are specifically tailor-made to them and their skills is something that we're trying to do. Fabulous. Um, are you limiting this to India for now? No. So yeah, it is our test uh, market. I mean, I don't think there's a better market across yeah. the world, uh, <laughs> better than India for a platform like Clan. But yeah, we'll be very, very focused on uh, the Indian market till we achieve uh, the product market fit. We know our use cases are being uh, sort of understood and being adopted well by the users. But uh, for a platform like ours, as P1 and P2 markets in the future, we definitely have identified the Indian subcontinental region, the countries of Bangladesh, Pakistan, Bhutan, Nepal, Sri Lanka. All of these countries somewhere look up to in India when it comes to any sports, like we look up to the West. Uh, and as P2, the MENA region is phenomenally uh, growing right now, uh, Middle East and Africa. Yeah. And we have a lot of relationships there. We're on calls, on weekly calls with a bunch of organizations based out of there. I mean, with each dynamic, the audience also changes. But the spine of the entire ecosystem still remains games at the end of the day. So we speak the same language just with probably different dictions. So we're, again, establishing a firm understanding of uh, the consumers in this market. And we know for a fact that there's a need for a product like Clan. So that is where we'll be focusing on our energy. So right, right. And um, do you think there's an opportunity for you, for you guys or, your, you know, specifically sports and gaming um, to become the, you know, leaders in this, training process or um, networking or training process because of the Asian games and inclusion of, uh, you know, because it now it has gone to a, to a different level, right? Yeah, it's, it's very real now. It's as real as it can get now. Yeah. So uh, do you think, um, you know, there's a, there's an opportunity uh, to have like a streamlined process where you guys are also tied up with, uh, with the government or, you know, because I see one factor that I see missing in India specifically is the support uh, from the organizations, from, from the, um, from the ministries, from the government, and it's lacking, like, I mean, I mean there's no support, uh, I would say. It, it has started, uh, I wouldn't yeah. deny that fact. It has started uh, in the last one or two years i've seen a lot of things happening but uh, before that there was nothing like this but do you see uh, any intersection point um, in that oh absolutely uh, and of course we're moving in the right direction i mean if we look at it with a very outsider's perspective uh, although i think the past five years is where we laid down the first seed of gaming and esports in india and we've come this far but the amount of noise and attention that the industry was able to gather in the past two years uh, is unparalleled. I don't think we even did that in the three years before that. And for a larger mass, um, it's new. They still look at this space as a niche space, but the niche is so massive that you cannot ignore it. You cannot simply ignore it. Every kid out there today, uh, like I, I remember growing up as a 90s kid, uh, for all of us, it was cricket, right? Yeah. If you don't play cricket, what the hell are you up to in life? <laughs> and that narrative has changed to gaming now. I've seen kids in my... I spend a lot of time with these kids, around these kids in terms of just understanding uh, the way they talk, the way they interact with each other. Now we live in an age where people step out of their houses, gather along in the society compound, but are playing games on their own. Yeah. <laughs> So that's the bare reality of it. And of course, the world is taking attention. India is taking attention. I'm so glad that the government with the whole setup of the ABGC task team um, have seen, I mean, we need to start somewhere. Everything big began with zero, right? And I think we're at that point. And the good part about it is that, I mean, leaving the government aside, the business side and the businesses and the organizations that exist in India right now are so firmly grounded in terms of understanding their audience. We know what to do. We know what needs to be done. Yeah. It's just that little bit of a support that needs to start coming in, a little bit of recognition, which allows people to take it seriously. This, it's The narrative around esports is also still pretty much formed. 
I mean, if we talk about the older people, parents to be specific, uh, they look at it in a specific way. Which I was about is, to I was about to bring that topic uh, because yeah. that's one of the things that uh, that is that is literally um, you know cutting down a lot of talent. uh because the society doesn't approve this as a career option uh this mm-hmm. happened with game development 3 years back but now game development at least is uh you know because it is looked upon like a software engineering or you know it side of it uh but mm-hmm. gaming specifically is still like a taboo <laughs> right it's uh, it's frowned okay. upon it's still frowned upon yeah so is there anything you know on that side uh because unless and until you don't convince the parents the kids are not going to you know f- uh, open heartedly they would they are not going to put their 100% onto onto this right absolutely and they'll have that some that little bit of thing holding them back in some of you yeah i mean like it's simple right how we as an industry expect support from a government body or something official kids as as very simply look for support as well from one of their parents or yeah. their older siblings i think what will change this is us yeah. all of us together the entire industry now we're starting to show the world the might of gaming and esports i yeah. mean the creators who are leading the way in terms of showing everyone that yeah it is a legitimate career option yeah um, it's But the whole narrative where an esports athlete is not different to any traditional sport athlete in any way or form is something that we're starting to build. But again, I mean, might be a cliche, but Rome wasn't built in a day. Of course, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I, what it took a uh, a generation. It took what three generations for the whole. पढ़ाई पूरी की है तो इंजीनियर बन जाओ या सीए बन जाओ या एमबीए कर लो तो चेंज. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, and that's the sort of effort that will go into this as well. But um, the biggest and the brightest shining light in this is that uh, when it comes to India specifically, esports and gaming is here to stay. It's here to stay for a hell of a long time. Uh, <laughs> so we'll get there. I, I don't, I don't doubt it. Uh, everything is falling into place. The narratives are changing. Um, people are viewing gaming in a very, very different light. Um, government support, having that news out there. Uh, i mean it's so beautiful that my father uh, after the budget was announced of course i was busy at work but when i got back home and we were at the dinner table he started asking me about the whole avgc task force where he said uh, gaming was mentioned what is it all about mm-hmm. so when a 60 65 year old is taking interest the right narrative is being put out there we were doing the right things it will take time but uh, whoever is in it for the long run has to benefit at the end of the day i don't doubt that one absolutely uh, also i think uh, one of the key game changer here is uh, the support from the vc fraternity or the investment fraternity because um, Two three years back, uh, they didn't have a case study. I that's what I believe. They they didn't have case. They have seen a uh, growth in the Western markets, but they didn't see any kind of case study in India. But e- only in the last year, if you see the amount of funds or money that people have raised in gaming business, it's huge. And I think that's one of the one of the. Re- you know one of the way which enabled a lot of experienced guys give opportunity to a lot of younger younger guys right and that is also shaping up uh, well so it's happening gradually for sure yeah yeah but i i believe you know it's great i mean uh, no one better than me to sort of uh, know how much investment was made in the gaming space by what pc and we've had a lot of conversations and you're very right i mean the fact that you pointed out that there was no thesis around it but in the last couple of years we've seen funds who are dedicated to gaming yeah also pop up in india and they're very active they're making the right sort of investments with the right understanding in fact uh, pre product we also generated a lot of interest because mm-hmm. gaming is a hot entity correct I mean, if you talk about it ad tech fintech and gaming uh, in the last couple of years have been a, a paradise uh, for vcs and also startups that operate in that space and gaming has definitely picked up their act uh, it was started 
to see value in it. Because see, I mean, the way we look at it and the way other businesses look at it is also very varied, right? Um, the biggest strength that our industry today possesses is our audience. Yeah. I mean, they're literally the karta dhartas of the entire scene because uh, it, I don't think there's an easier way to reach out to a millennial or a Gen Z than gaming. Yeah. And the real value is our users. Um, the fact that um, gaming has become such an effortless vehicle for anyone to reach out to these guys and talk to these guys. As long as um, they're happy, they're having, I mean, even the slightest of things that work in their benefit makes them really happy. That is what we've noticed. And it's it's we take immense pleasure in just being something or, or being or building a community that allows these guys to be where they belong. Gamers innately are or traditionally are not that social. They're very anti-social. <laughs> uh, but that is also changing now. These guys are out there. Uh, they do their live streams. They're, they're self-teaching themselves how to speak in public. They are designers who are trying out crazier stuff by the day just to edge each other out and find that place. So I think the there's a lot happening that meets the eye, which is being noticed now by the investor side of things, business side of things. And it's phenomenal where finally something that's so huge in the West is being sold and is got that launch pad in a country like India. And I mean, the West is looking at us as a great market. There's a reason all yeah, these yeah. large publishers are like the is trying to get to the audience. Yeah, precisely. I mean, it's a larger audience. See, it's a no-brainer, right? When, yeah. for example, when a PC title can reach out to a hundred million users, they're sort of limiting themselves to say a thirty million or a forty million audience size. Yeah. But just rolling out a platform like a mobile version of whatever game they're playing. They can capture the whole world, right? And that's what we're seeing. Games like, I mean, publishers like Riot rolling out Valorant. Battlefield was announced recently. Rainbow Siege is announced recently. Apex is being tested. I, in fact, tested the game as well. It's brilliant. And I think we're at such a such a point right now that it's going to go boom after this point. So in the next couple of years when these titles come in. And what will be the best part? around this is to see publishers also being actively involved uh, in the scene. Uh, like a Grafton and a Garena today are very heavily involved. Supercell has been historically heavily involved. Publishers stepping in and working with the industry hands in hands. I think uh, things, we will see that happen. I don't doubt that. One. That is the organic next step to it because we've reached to a point where we uh, have to do it. Yeah. So being a social network, um, social network app, right, and it's dedicated only to gamers. Uh, but these bigger, um, you know, bigger whales, like say Facebook and Instagram, obviously, uh, with all the tech and money in the world, uh, they can definitely churn out things like this, right? Um, mm-hmm. Do you uh, do you think there is um, there's a point where you stand against, you know, these giant social networking apps um you know are competing against this yeah i mean we are i mean i won't shy away from the fact that we are we absolutely are i mean instagram has a large audience right you talk about anything under the sun you know, in terms of interests in terms of content in terms of type of people lifestyle food car there's literally everything on that but the verticalization of communities is something that is very, very predominantly happening right now. We're seeing platforms that are creating communities for musicians, just for easy discoverability, uh, connecting them with, say, uh, music labels, just helping them out, like musicians. It's a big category on Instagram, right? And likewise, gaming is a big category on an Instagram. But will a large platform like that shift focus to one community just one community that's I don't that's not practically feasible. Yeah. I mean, of course they have the tech. They have I mean I it's it'll be dumb of me to talk about anything that uh, sort of uh, won't work in their favor when it comes to uh, making a move in a manner that we're talking. 
But uh, what sets us apart is the understanding of our user base. I mean, we've before rolling out the product, it was years worth of research just to understand our users. And when you work so closely uh, at the ground level, it's it's not that easy to shake that foundation. And uh, while we're going up against them, we know for a fact that gamers need it because uh, there are certain things that you can do on an Instagram and certain things that you can do on a Facebook, but you can't do what a clan offers you. And if uh, the interest is right and our community has spoken to us till this point, and we know for a fact that uh, there is definitive need and the adoption is also happening in the right manner. But I mean, the day they decide to compete, we, I think I have to wait and watch. I think uh, I think you rightly mentioned about the understanding of the audience, right? And I think that's one of the key differentiator that Clan also has uh, uh, against these uh, foreign counterparts like uh, GamerLink, etc. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, I I'll 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 just do a shameless uh, shameless plug in, uh, but I but this is just an example where I I relate to this a lot. Uh, we were making, a, we, we are actually making a PC console and slash mobile title called Mukti uh, at oh, Underdogs, wow. right? And it's based uh-huh. on hum, human trafficking. Um, but it's like a, a like an experience kind of a game. You don't shoot anybody. It's like a first person story exploration game, right? Uh, and this game is based in an Indian museum, right? Uh, but the very first uh, thought that we had was to create a museum based in Manhattan, right? So, uh, so it took us one month to just think about whether we should actually go ahead and uh, make a museum, which is in Manhattan or probably do what we can do best. Right. Because, yeah. because, uh, doing us doing a museum, creating an environment, uh, in Manhattan would be a lot of research and, uh, we would not give proper justice to that against what we can do is we know the roots. We know what is in India. We know how the how the system works. Probably, if we put some efforts in building what India is great at, uh, we no. can put that out to the global world. And people have not seen that also, which stand out as a different USP for the game. Because a lot of games have museum based in Europe, US, right? But none of the games out there, global titles have an, have an Indian museum. So uh, I totally relate to the fact that, you know, the biggest differentiators in Indian, um, you know, among the Indian creators versus the, versus the foreign counterparts is that we really have that understanding of the audience because it is completely different from what, what the, what the audience out there is. Right. Very true. I mean, uh, not only that, but mobile esports. Uh, it I I and I take pride in the fact that we're big on mobile. I think it's the future. The world is telling us yes, clearly it's the future. Um, and we've had conversations with a bunch of people based out of the US and uh, Europe. Is that uh, there are tournament organizations, there are platforms uh, that do specific things. Uh, there are orgs that we've spoke, competitive orgs that we've spoken to. Uh, over there, that sentiment of coming to India is very, very high. But what is the biggest barrier today for them is the lack of understanding of mobile esports. Yeah. And also, our users are very, very different from anyone else out there. <laughs> I mean, again, like I said, uh, we've worked at such a ground level with these guys. We understand simple pain points like, uh, I mean, we have a group of testers, right? Initially had one, we still have one. We do our, all our ad over there. Uh, these are 300 kids aged 15 to 18, 19, 20. And they're the best, right? Because a platform like us, uh, Apples to Apples does not exist over there outside. For us to learn something and to build the right way, our only way is to just keep understanding our users and what they think. Yeah. So we've encountered problems like uh, when we roll out a new APK and we send it out for these guys to test, uh, we get replies like, uh, Recharge kal kiya tha, aaj kar sakta. I won't be able to use the app. Yeah. And it's so innocent and it's so true. And then we, of course, obviously, since there are team, there are extended clan, uh, we took care of basic things like those. But even simplest of conversations help us understand our user a percent better every single day. 
I mean, yeah. I wake up every single day, head to office thinking, wow, I understand our users really well now. And that day does not end with me learning at least five new things about my user every single day. Yeah. So yeah. even if people, if us, the day we sort of start understanding these guys is only when the West will start understanding them. Uh, and uh, I think it's a great differentiator as well. It's give, It gives us a great opportunity to not just copy. I mean, I don't want to uh, throw that word out in a wrong manner because uh, or just adopt what's happening in the West. The way we are pegged and poised right now in India, we have a golden opportunity of building something our way in our terms for our people. Correct. And I think you should all focus on it. I love the fact that you mentioned Mukti. I mean, I don't see that as a plug where you have to discuss what we do and it's great to have these conversations. Uh, it doesn't mar the experience in any way, right? You yeah. wouldn't have been able to deliver a Manhattan to a, 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 a child in Mumbai. Uh, how much ever you tried, right? Unless you were there physically and you did a certain things. Correct. But uh, the fact that the experience is so genuine and so pure. Because uh, there's, I mean, the way you understand your audience, I don't think anyone else can. And when you specifically invest that amount of time with that agenda, it becomes impossible. You become impenetrable after it. Yeah. You always hold that. Yeah. I think forget about the West. I mean, you, even companies in India uh, and a lot of industry professionals as well. Like I spoke, mm-hmm. uh, I, I spoke, I have spoken to a lot of people uh, who own their companies in India. Who are uh, who who are actually confused when when you ask them uh, what is the real gaming audience in India, right? And if you answer uh, that these are the people who have high end PCs and in sitting in metropolitan cities in India are the real gamers? No, 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 yeah, because they don't have an understanding that the real gaming audience in India are from tier two and tier three. With that exact thing, that recharge coupon, uh, yeah, who don't, it's a real problem. yeah, who <laughs> don't know what Google Play Store is, like they just they just play games with the top ups, um, yeah. you know, and that is that is the real big audience from India who are gamers, and to for the West to reach to that audience, there is a lot of uh, you know there is a big big gap there. Yeah. But local support can do that. I mean, there have been a few organizations in the past who've come, um, not necessarily found the success or um, the way they perceived things to happen. They probably didn't happen and they did exit. But I think we're again at that point where we were probably a little too early back then. But right now, the, the infrastructure that uh, us as a community, as an industry have built, um, I mean, any of the largest organizations across uh, the world would be very well handled because, see, it cannot be done without local support. That's something that in multiple conversations with multiple stakeholders is what I've realized. Yeah. But um, they can, and I think they will thrive this time around because uh, the industry is larger. There are more players. Um, initially, it was that young breed, that young crop of gamers who turned to managers, who turned to talent managers. But we're now seeing institutional folks entering the space. I mean, it's not a plug with the fact that uh, our founding team has a cumulative experience of 50 years yeah. in working in different uh, industries, be it tech, be it media, be it entertainment, be it content. Uh, and it's individuals and units like these and founders like these who are entering the space and this will definitely change the game. There'll be a, a more professional approach to things. Uh, and I mean that gap between the Nazaras and the Jet Synthesis and the absolute, absolute raw startups, we're seeing a mid also being created. So that was a big missing part, right? Yeah. The, when you meet, meet I mean, in, in the entire structure, if you, the bridge is missing. Now we're forming that bridge. And I think it's it's just a beautiful, it's a great time to be a part of this ecosystem. And together, I'm very sure uh, uh, India will be put on the global map the way it deserves to be. And uh, yeah, and even if Clan plays even say a 0.5% role in making that happen, I'll sleep peacefully at <laughs>
all right all right uh amazing conversation amazing insights man uh any last piece of advice for the youth of india interested in games as a career explore guys please explore opportunities and options out there uh when i say explore you need not necessarily need to make it as a competitive game or you need not necessarily be great at content creation figure out what skills you have that can help the industry if you have a good eye for design try designing if you speak well try becoming a caster or a manager because communication plays a very very key role in any unit i'm not talking about just gaming or esports just even the simplest relationships in life can be based around the ability to converse and the ability to uh, put the right words in front to have a very constructive discussion so keep exploring don't limit yourself to just being a gamer or a content creator there is a lot more out there to do game designing is a phenomenal uh, career path right now we're seeing so many indian publishers just keep tracking if you can reach out to these guys i know for a fact that people like web of people like me are always available uh, for guidance and approach so reach out don't don't feel shy to have a conversation drop us a message drop me a message on clan drop me a message on linkedin uh, i'll be more than happy to just talk uh, or at least point you in the right direction and make sure that you start speaking to the right people so be curious ask questions ask a lot of questions there's no wrong question at this point in time this age ask as many questions as you can uh, don't quit exploring uh, the space and i'm very sure you'll find something which you're already skilled at and is a part of the gaming and esports industry which you desperately want to be a part of absolutely uh, and the best part of uh, you know the best part about asking is that you just have to ask <laughs> because yeah. yeah because if you if you don't the answer is obviously no right yeah. and i mean the worst that could happen is someone who just not reply yeah. <laughs> doesn't change anyone's life but even out of five people that you reach out to one of them with less i think that's a good start that's a i mean that's a big positive out of any so. right thanks a lot sagar uh, ladies and gentlemen sagar nayar from clan one day one day